Hello students, welcome back to Clary Concepts, Unleashing the Conceptual Learning. Today we are going to talk about fluid mechanics as a subject and its major application areas. So this lecture will make you understand about what are the different application areas where fluid mechanics has a vital role to play in the industry as well, right? So before we move on to application areas, we would I would like to give you brief understanding about what is fluid mechanics as such. So this fluid mechanism is two words. The first word is fluid. So when I say fluid, something that comes to your mind is some uh, water that we regularly drink. Let's say fruit juice, milk, then the air we breathe in, then the fuel that we use to propel ourselves from one place to other place in the vehicle. So like all of these, if you see, they are, you would say that the fluids are this kind of matters. And, and when you see very closely, they are either in liquid form or in gaseous form. So in general, if somebody asks you what is fluid, you can say that something which is in liquid or gaseous form that is fluid. Yes. Now the question is, so all this material comes in the category of fluid. Now the question is, what is mechanics? So in mechanics, I would say mechanics is something that deals with, you know, the behavior of the bodies, whether they are at rest or in motion when subjected by the forces. So in general, if I want to define mechanics, I would say that mechanics is the branch of physical science, you know, that deals with Mechanics is one of physical science that deals with the behavior of different objects, okay, when they are subjected to these several external forces, right, whether the object is stationary or moving. So now, when this kind of behavior is studied for fluid, that means when mechanics is applied to the fluid body, that entire study is known as fluid mechanics. So in general, fluid mechanics is said to be a branch of physical science that deals with the behavior of fluid, whether at rest or in motion, when subjected by the external forces, so to say. So now, if I talk about fluid mechanics, it has two different streams again. In one stream, the fluid is at rest and the entire study, the study of behavior of the fluid at rest when they are subjected by the external forces, it is called fluid statics. And on the other side, when fluid is in motion and at that time, if you study its behavior, when they are applied by the external forces, that kind of study is known as fluid dynamics. So the, both of this combines and makes fluid mechanics as such. So now we will talk about the applications of fluid mechanics one by one. The first area which is very very close to us we always use regularly on day to day life automobiles whether it is our car, whether it is a bike all of them are equipped with something called IC engine. Now what is the main function of IC engine? We have a fuel inside our vehicles which is either in petrol, diesel, you know gas whatever you call it that, that, that fuel is in liquid form and if vehicle moves with the with the usage of IC engine let's say. Now this IC engine functions to convert the energy from the fuel in form of mechanical work. Now if you want to see this conversion that is happening you are going to extract energy from fluid. So fluid mechanics plays a very very vital role in this design. You, you see the racing cars in fact the external body of racing cars have been designed based on the external aerodynamics that people study using the fluid mechanics because they want the body to be such that the minimum friction or resistance is offered by the body to the motion. So, this is one of the very vital area. Second application area, if we see medical sciences. Now, when I say in medical science where fluid mechanics is used, in fact, one of the very closest example to our human body, to us is human body. You know, our body is equipped with heart, which is again the pump and it the, the, the blood it flows through the arteries and veins is in form of fluid. Now, if you talk about the function of heart and the motion of blood in arteries and veins, it itself depicts the importance of fluid mechanics for a human life, right? Now, when you talk about the devices, medical devices like artificial breather, ventilators, you know, blood measuring, measuring equipments, all of these can never be imaged without the intervention of fluid into it. So, when they have been designed, the principles of fluid mechanics have played a very, very vital role uh, in their uh, designing. Then, we will talk about piping designs. So, whether you talk about pipe design of your residential uh, buildings or corporate buildings or industry buildings. Uh, the designs of all the piping, uh, piping network has been possible with a uh, fundamental knowledge of fluid mechanics because when you design the piping network, the one of the very foremost question comes is the pumping capacity, pumping power required to drive the fluid from one place to other place. And that answer can only be given by the fundamental understanding of fluid mechanics. So, in this area also fluid mechanics has vital role to play. Then we talk about electrical appliances. Now, when you hear this word, something that comes to your mind is fan that we use it or air conditioning unit or you can say refrigeration uh, refrigerator so to say or you can say water heater now you see all of these devices you can never imagine these devices without an intervention or without application of fluid mechanics because 
fan is used to drive the air which is present in the atmosphere which is present in the room itself right air conditioning unit is used to cool down the air within the uh, room right and again it itself operates on the principle of vapor compression uh, system and which, which itself has a refrigerant inside that uh, so you talk about ac you talk about refrigerator all of them can never be designed without understanding fluid mechanics right you talk about water heaters in water heaters you are aware that in winters the temperature goes to my uh, let's say 10 degrees celsius 12 degrees celsius and when you when you want to take a bath you need a temperature of at least 35 36 degrees celsius so so this this this, this kind of water heaters are designed to to you know exactly uh, increase the temperature of a particular flow rate of water so that how much energy to be supplied uh, even water is flowing at some some flow rate at this particular temperature so what i mean to say is all these devices exactly you know uh, they use the fundamental knowledge of fluid mechanics to uh, to get designed then ships and boats you see both these vehicles they are itself meant to propel themselves on surface of fluid rather water right now you see there are propellers and engines which are driven by the engines engine again has diesel engine inside that right so the energy from diesel is converted to the mechanical work and mechanical work is supplied to the propellers which propels the ships further and they are always running on the surface of water which is again fluid so all this designing the when they are designed the fluid mechanics has a very very vital role to play in this domain then you take about aircraft aerial vehicles like passenger aircrafts you know helicopters fighter jets you see any of these devices they are meant to to operate in the fluid medium itself so what kind of lift force should be there what kind of speed should be there what kind of drag force should be there you know what thrust should be provided to the particular vehicle to get certain speed so all of these questions can never be answered without understanding fluid mechanics as such right and in fact you talk about passenger aircraft which are meant to travel at 10 kilometers of height from the ground and uh, the temperature the ambient around the at that particular height is minus 50 degrees celsius and when you are sitting in the aircraft at that particular height you are feeling the temperature of 25 degrees celsius which is common to us now outside the aircraft you have minus 50 inside the aircraft you have 25 degrees celsius now you see all of this the, the air is maintained within the compartment at the comfortable region so when you're designing all these things you will have to use the fundamental knowledge of fluid mechanics so if you are studying the subject very uh, fundamentally and conceptually i think uh, the, these are the areas where you can really work hard and you can develop your career then power and process plants whatever electricity we are using today it all comes through power plants and power plants either use coal either use hydro either use let's say wind uh, to convert the energy into the electricity so when you talk about the power plants in india particularly almost 72 percentage of electricity that we are using comes through coal based thermal power plant and when i say coal based thermal power plant it means the energy is extracted from the coal and converted to electricity and the mechanism of that is driven by a fundamental principle called Rankine cycle and Rankine cycle ka jo, the heart of Rankine cycle is water which is the primary fluid and the water converts itself from you know liquid form to gaseous uh, steam form and then again back to liquid so all this designing when you talk about power plants it the, the fundamental knowledge of fluid mechanics is really really important to do that you talk about hydropower plants where fluid itself comes at particular velocity and pressure and interacts with the turbine to exchange the energy and that turbine rotates and gives energy uh, the mechanical work to the generator and gives you electricity so if you talk about designing of this the fundamental knowledge of fluid mechanics is important windmills you say the the windmills are used to convert uh, energy from wind to mechanical work and the designing of the blades happens only with the knowledge of external aerodynamics right then talk about fire safety devices you have a lot many these days the the fire extinguisher nozzle hose the fire extinguisher bottles in, in form of powder and all the tanks that we have you you see all the designings they, they are all designed based on the fundamental principles of fluid mechanics right you can never design this without the understanding of fluid mechanics even not only the artificial uh, devices and equipment you talk about nature the nature also has uh, fluid mechanics you know a role fluid mechanics also has a role to play in nature you see the the movement of jellyfish inside the water the movement of birds they are flying in the sky the movement of butterflies flying in the air in the garden you see all of them are indirectly using the principles of fluid mechanics to propel themselves right now i'll give one classical example you might have seen a group of fish you know uh, flowing from one place i mean moving from one place to other place in a particular uh, you know arrangement i don't know whether you have seen this or not but you definitely would have seen this the birds flying in the sky in particular arrangement called v shape now my question is why do they travel in v shape have you ever thought about it 
the the answer to this lies in if you google it you will get an answer the major major reason behind this is you know when they travel in v shape the efforts the research at least says that the efforts required by birds to fly reduces by 80 percentage now how does this happen because when the first bird flap its wing, uh, wings now, the, there is a vortex being created a vortex meaning a low pressure region the uh, circulatory eddies with low pressure region in the center now vortex generally have a tendency to travel in v shape now when the first bird flap its wing there are two vortex being generated they travel in the downstream direction in v shape the at subsequent bird try to get into that so that the efforts required for him or for the subsequent bird to travel will reduce by a drastic amount so then this bird utilizes the uh, uh, the the drag i mean the vortex by the first one this bird utilizes the vortex by second one so it goes on like that and since the vortex travels in the v shape the birds also take its, its orientation like that so that the efforts required gets reduced overall right then we see uh, the sports ball you might have seen the you know golf ball having dimples within that uh, ball you know why the dimples are being created let me tell you dimples are created to reduce the drag by uh, uh, you know by larger amount you take the example of cricket ball you might have seen the cricket ball you know uh, taking the swing on it now how the swing happens you know let me share the fundamental knowledge behind that you know a cricket ball has a seam seam means the stitches the stitches now when the seam is at angled position and when the baller delivers the ball what happens is the fresh stream of air is uh, crossing over the ball and there are two different halves of the ball when when the air is flowing over it right when you releases the ball now what happens is when the seam is at particular angle the fresh stream that it comes with one portion of the air uh, over the ball is a turbulent uh, region why because it passes over the seam it triggers a turbulent uh, boundary layer turbulent boundary layer meaning it has a different property on the other hand the, the boundary layer is very very smooth in nature it is laminar boundary layer now when you have a ball on one side is turbulent boundary layer on other side is laminar boundary layer very smooth layer that means the forces the pressure distribution is also different at both the sides and if pressure distribution is different there is always an unbalanced force that is going to apply on the ball one half there is a larger force another half there is a smaller force with this what will happen is there is a net effective force in one direction which will help ball to get a swing so this is the fundamental principle behind the swing of the ball again this is answered by the fluid mechanics right so in sports also it has a very very vital role to play now we have understood all these applications of different areas of the subject so if you are interested in making career in any of this field let me tell you fluid mechanics is really helpful for you to uh, make your career in any of this domain right so it is a very very vital role to play so at least i hope with this lecture if you start learning fluid mechanics you might really be motivated to learn this from a conceptual uh, perspective from uh, you know a fundamental perspective rather than you know going for one direction so i hope that this will really help you to get motivated and we will see you soon in the next class where we will start learning the actual principles of fluid mechanics thank you so much